The Liberal government is basking in a major victory this morning, the end to the tariff standoff with the United States. Steel and aluminum workers are also breathing a sigh of relief after nearly a year of market tension. The Prime Minister shared the news of the deal with workers yesterday in Hamilton, Ontario. We, you know, stayed strong because that's what workers were asking for us, but also that's what Canadians were saying, that these tariffs uh, didn't make sense around national security. Uh, they were hurting Canadian consumers, Canadian workers. The tariffs are being eliminated later this weekend, and that could make room for another international agreement, the new NAFTA deal. Katie Simpson brings us the details from Ottawa. I wanted you all to hear it. First, we just got a full lift on the steel and aluminum tariffs. Right on! Canadian steel workers have been waiting nearly a year for this news. The Prime Minister just as relieved as they are that the tariff war with Canada's closest ally is coming to an end. I think the, the, there was no one breakthrough moment. It was just a lot of steady conversations. The deal between Canada, the U.S. and Mexico was struck to lift tariffs within 48 hours. It came together after the Americans backed down on a request to introduce a quota system that would cap how much steel and aluminum Mexico and Canada could sell in the U.S. Instead, all three countries promised to take additional steps to stop cheap Chinese steel from flooding the market by adopting a new monitoring system. Now that we've had a full lift on these tariffs, uh, we are going to work with the United States on timing for ratification. So that deal is going to be a fantastic deal for our country, and hopefully Congress will approve the USMCA quickly. They're talking about the new NAFTA. Trump is said to be desperate for a public win, since his trade talks with China are not going well. Canada and Mexico had both warned ratification would not happen unless the tariffs were lifted. After an intense two weeks of phone calls and meetings, all sides found common ground. That's CBC's Katie Simpson reporting from Ottawa. Now let's bring in someone who has been opposed to the tariffs from day one. Catherine Cobden is the president of the Canadian Steel Producers Association. That is the national voice of Canada's $15 billion steel industry, and she joins us this morning from Ottawa. Catherine, I know you must be happy. I know your colleagues must be happy today. Explain to us why yesterday's decision is so important. Oh, good morning, Natasha. Thank you. Uh, yes, we are so pleased with the decision and so pleased with this outcome and, uh, frankly, relieved. This, these tariffs have been around for close to a year and, frankly, they were taking their toll on our businesses. We had been experiencing job losses, loss of investment and just a general sense of depression in the industry. So the lifting has, you know, breathed new life into the steel sector uh, uh, and we'll, you know, when it happens tomorrow, we'll bring, we'll breathe new life into the steel sector. So talk to us about that. What happens next? How do things move forward from this point on? It's absolutely amazing that within, within 48 hours, the tariffs just simply stop applying to our products. So what that means, in essence, is we get back to business. We get back to the free flow of goods between Canada and the U.S., our free trade, you know, of steel moves across the border back and forth regularly, uh, as it, or that's how it used to move. We're going to go back to that, and we're going to not have the, um, the exposure of 25% duty on top of our steel, which was really a, a huge challenge for the industry. You know, you talked about in the first answer about the job losses, how stressful it's been. Remind oh. us of that, of this the human aspect of this story, because for so many people it's about numbers, it's about economics, but for you it's very personal, and for many, many Canadians it's very personal. Let's, let's talk about the workers who've been affected. Yeah, that was the most deeply disturbing part of all of this, right, was the job loss situation. Um, I think we were seeing up to 700 jobs that had already been lost, and what we were really, really concerned about was what that future job loss potential could be um, if, these, if these tariffs had continued. So yes, indeed, um, you know, this is a great day for our workers. Uh, I must say the producers of steel and the workers, you know, really, by, really banded together to work with our government in their efforts to get these tariffs lifted. And it's, um, you know, I think that's when you, that's, you know, another aspect to Team Canada. I think we really worked hard and strong and collectively together. Let's talk about the fact that you're, at least the Canadians are dealing with a very 
a, a very different sort of administration in the United States, and the minds mm -hmm. could change at the drop of a dime. Is there any sense of concern or worry as you move forward? Well, listen, we're really pleased that the prime minister and the president uh, had a discussion and they've, you know, this has been agreed to at that level. There's, uh, so that's a fantastic um, outcome. And I also feel that if you look at how this deal came together, what you really had transpiring was that there was pain on both sides of our border. Um, so while Canadian industry was feeling pain, there were many on the U.S. side as well. And I'm sure that the president was responding, you know, to Americans in their time of need to get the tariffs lifted as well. So from my vantage point, you know, the risks are low in the sense that everyone realizes that they had been, it had been, you know, painful to, to many workers um, on both sides of the border. Well, for more on this, the Welcome International Trade Lawyer, Mark Warner, is here. Um, you're here to talk about what this deal could mean, how it came so quickly and for many unexpectedly. Let's talk about this. Um, we've got the issue with the announcement being made yesterday. A lot of excitement in this country, a lot of positive response from federal officials. What was your take on it? Well, I think it was positive. It, it, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it, it's moves, it helps us move the ball towards ratification of the new NAFTA, the USMCA, uh, further down the field. Um, it, it was always clear that the Americans wanted, uh, that if they were going to lift the tariffs, they were going to extract a little bit of pain from us. Uh, many of us thought they would be uh, hard quotas. Um, but the Americans also always, before they even put these steel and aluminum tariffs in place, expressed concerns about what they called circumvention or, or transshipment of Chinese or other subsidized or dumped steel and aluminum into Canada that then got reprocessed and exported into the United States. So Canada didn't really deal with any of that before, and yesterday we agreed to. Um, so that's, that's, that's positive, I think, uh, and that's why both, both sides get to say they have a victory. Um, the devil will be in the details. Um, I think the, the government and, uh, will, will be very happy with this agreement. But when you start, we, ha we need to know more about how the monitoring is going to work. They talk about mixing of steel, uh, pouring, uh, uh, poured and uh, melted steel from outside of North America with North American product and, and how that's going to be traced back into what's exported in the United States. And then there is this surge mechanism that looks very much suspiciously like a de facto quota. I was a little less sort of that until I read the Spanish translation of the Mexican agreement, which really makes it look like a quota. So if it's a quota for Mexico, it looks like essentially what we've agreed to is a quota. Um, without, without, uh, at the current levels. You know. Okay, so you mentioned the devil's in the details, so let's take a look at some of the details from the deal. I'm going to read a section of it for you. Let's bring up the board where it's written in the deal, in the event that imports of aluminum or steel products surge meaningfully beyond historic volumes of trade, the importing country may request consultations with the exporting country after such consultations, the importing party may impose duties of 25% for steel and 10% for aluminum. So have they left the door open to bring the tariffs back? Yeah, now what I should say this, the, the existing, our existing trade agreements with the United States, both with, through the W2O, the World Trade Organization, and the existing North American Free Trade Agreement provide for safeguards. So there is a process that we go through, a country, any country goes through to have safeguards applied. So if there's one criticism here, you'd say it looks like Canada has agreed to an expedited safeguard regime under this agreement. So we wouldn't have to go through, the United States wouldn't have to go through a complicated process to get it approved. And also, Canada, the United States would, uh, would not, sorry, Canada would not be able to retaliate on products outside of aluminum and steel. So what we did the last time with the last round of tariffs in the United States is we targeted our, our retaliation to uh, commodities, agricultural commodities where people would get hurt, and even things like Kentucky bourbon. We won't be able to do that again. So it looks like it's in part a uh, expedited safeguard regime and in part when they talk about a meaningful surge, a meaningful surge over what level? Well, it's a fudge. And as I said, the fudge is uh, baked a little bit more in the Mexican agreement. But I think on the whole, what this, uh, what this means is it's an attempt to get one issue off the table. Um, it's, we have to watch the details of it. And um, I think the Prime Minister seemed to suggest yesterday that we might even be willing in Canada to put the agreement through our Parliament before uh, Parliament rises for the election, which I think the Americans probably wanted, and that's probably an informal uh, sort of commitment that we made in addition to what's in the black and white on paper.